Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'm going to go over some augmented Lagrangian stuff specific to the QP solver that you'll be making in question three of the homework. Um, so I just want to go over some of the more specific details and uh, how this thing works in general. So uh, first, let's look at a canonical problem. So let's just go ahead and assume this is convex for the time being. Um, I'm minimizing over some value x. Um, objective function is f. I have an equality constraint function, c of x. And then I have an inequality constraint function, h of x. And so if we want to map this to the QP that we are given, um, we can do this in, in this way. So here we have X, here's our quadratic cost function, um, here's our linear equality constraint, and then here's our linear inequality constraint. So um, the first step for this is let's define what our Lagrangian is. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have two new variables. So X, this is our primal variable, and then we have lambda and mu. And lambda is going to be associated with our equality constraint function. And then mu is going to be associated with our inequality constraint function. So as we see for the Lagrangian, we have our objective function. And then we have uh, lambda transpose times the equality constraint function. And then mu transpose times the inequality constraint function. And this is our Lagrangian. So there are some sign, different sign conventions that you'll see out there. And that um, maybe Zach has gone over in class. but for this homework, this is the sign convention we'll use is that this is a plus, and sometimes this shows up as a minus. So next, let's look at the KKD condition. So I know we've gone over this um, a few different times in class. I just wanted to go over it one more time in like a comprehensive way for any convex problem. So the first thing is we have our stationarity condition, and this just says that the gradient um, of the Lagrangian with respect to X must be zero. So this just means that, you know, we have a gradient of the cost function, then our uh, equality constraint Jacobian transpose times that dual variable, and then our inequality constraint Jacobian transpose times that dual variable, and this must all be equal to zero. And then the next set of conditions is primal feasibility. That's this right here. And this is pretty much just saying that um, the original constraints, which is ax equals b and cx is less than or equal to d, must actually be true. Um, and then we have dual feasibility, which says that this mu, which is the dual variable associated with our inequality constraints, must be positive. The last condition here is our complementarity condition. And so what this says is that the element wise product of the dual variable mu with our inequality constraint function h must be zero. So what that means is that if our constraint is active, so h of x equals zero at that indice i, um, then the corresponding dual variable is going to be something positive. And then if this constraint is inactive, so this has a negative value, um, this is going to be zero. So now we uh, have what we need to look at the augmented Lagrangian. So what we have here is I've noted this L of rho. This just means augmented Lagrangian. Remember our Lagrangian was uh, just wrote it as L right here. And it was a function of X lambda mu. So now we have this augmented Lagrangian, which is now a function of X lambda mu, and then this new rho, which is our penalty. And so what the augmented Lagrangian is, is that we take our original Lagrangian and we don't change anything about it. And then we add these two terms. So what these two terms are is the first one is a penalty rho divided by two times the squared norm of our equality constraint function. So if the constraints are satisfied, c of x equals zero, then this ends up being zero. But if they are not satisfied and c of x is not equal to zero, then we have a quadratic penalty on that. And likewise, for the inequality constraints, we have something similar, but not exactly the same. We have for one half, and then here's our inequality constraint function and it's in a quadratic with this i rho term. So this i rho is a diagonal matrix, and basically this is what encodes the active set into this augmented Lagrangian. And so what this says is that if the constraint is inactive and the dual variable associated with it is zero, then I don't penalize it whatsoever. So my the diagonal entry for the ith index is zero. And if this is not true, then we throw our penalty row on there. So now we have what we need to actually go through the, uh, the full augmented Lagrangian algorithm, as you guys will use. So we can initialize everything with x equals 0, lambda equals 0, mu equals 0. And then we can start with some initial penalty. I can't remember what is on the homework, but we can just use 1 for this. And then um, the loop is actually super simple. So let's just walk through these four steps. First step is that we're going to solve. Um, we're going to minimize our augmented Lagrangian with respect to X. And what we're doing here is that we're keeping lambda, mu, and rho constant, and we're minimizing over X. So the way we do this is that we use Newton's method. So you're going to have to form um, analytical Hessians and gradients 
for this augmented Lagrangian, which is actually very straightforward. If you just write out what the actual constraint functions are in the augmented Lagrangian, you'll see that it's another quadratic. So you can just write out the Hessian ingredient pretty easily. And so what we'll do is it will solve this thing until it converges and it should take one step, but it may take more um, based on some numerical things. And then we're gonna update our variable X with the solution to this problem. And then we're gonna move on to the update for the dual variables. So here what we do is that we treat the dual variables associated with the inequality and equality constraints differently. So we start with the equality constraints, which is this lambda, and we just update lambda like this every single time. And then for the inequality constraints, we do something a little different. We take the element-wise max of a vector of zeros and then mu plus rho times the inequality constraints at this new x. And this is an element-wise max. And so you can do this in Julia pretty easily. If you just drop a dot um, in between the name of the function and the arguments, it will evaluate it element-wise. And that's how we update our dual variables. And then we update our penalty. Um, and this is also given to us. And then step four is we just check convergence. So if you remember earlier, these KKT conditions, this says that if I ever find an X, lambda, or mu that satisfies all these conditions and the problem is convex, then I have the solution that I found is globally optimal. I can't do any better. That is the optimal solution. Um, and so what we're doing is that we're going to check these um, or some of these at the end of each of those loops for the augmented Lagrangian, and that will tell us when we have to stop iterating. So in the homework, what we have is that we have, I think it's dual residual, which does this, and then primal residual, which is this. And that's just our way of checking some of the KKD conditions. And then after that, so we check the conditions and if we converge, then we're done. Um, if not, then we just keep looping until we do converge.